The main takeaway from my presentation is that South Africa is still operating on a reasonably functional basis. It's grossly suboptimal and if we carry on on this basis eventually we will run out of money to do everything and build up massive debts if we are not careful. But for the present the situation is not as critical as many would like to paint it. What is extraordinary is that in the face of uh, massive headwinds uh, in terms of energy shortages, logistical bottlenecks and high levels of crime and criminal activity and poor outcomes in education that the country's economy has not collapsed. We are still managing to eke out some positive growth and that can be attributable to a number of factors that are working as stabilizers in the economy including the diversity of the country that creates checks and balances, the tremendous work that non-governmental organizations are doing, uh, the strength of religious organizations in the country, and also the fact that uh, there is a small section of society that is still gainfully employed, earning income, and carrying the lion's share of whatever is ac economic activity is taking place, so that we are, are not seeing a total collapse of the economy in the face of all these headwinds. Uh, furthermore, from a short-term point of view, there appear to be some tentative signs that some of these constraints are actually being addressed in a small way and uh, we are seeing a little bit of an improvement uh, and that is particularly relevant to mining and manufacturing sectors. I wanted to touch on um, the issue of fixed capital formation. You mentioned how important that is for transforming the, the economy, that it was the heart really. And um, I wanted to get a feel for what's standing in the way of it improving from the current, I think you mentioned about 15%, yeah. uh, and it should be ideally at around 30. Um, so what's standing in the way? I mean, there's capacity to implement things, there's corruption, it's, uh, like, what, what are the issues? A lot of issues are standing in the way of a build-up of capital investment. Uh, the first, obviously, from a, a short to medium term point of view, is energy availability and uh, uh, ability to transport goods and services free, uh, freely and cheaply. Uh, those are impeding the desire of businesses to invest. Uh, secondly, uh, from a longer term point of view, far more pernicious has been state capture and corruption uh, that has interfered with procurement processes to such, a, such an extent that uh, businesses are becoming ever more reluctant to invest for fear of uh, their investments being diverted to the pockets of a handful of connected individuals. And uh, the hand in hand with that has been the proliferation of criminal syndicates and sabotage that have actually interfered with many of the investment projects that uh, have been uh, on the cards to be undertaken but shelved because of corruption and criminal uh, activity. And the most classic, of course, is trying to alleviate the energy shortage and the, uh, improve the rail network and the port network and the f way in which uh, criminal syndicates have actually been interfering with any attempts to try and uh, uh, fix the, that form of infrastructure. Fortunately, um, it does appear as if business has adopted a policy of moving towards ever more capital intensity and we have seen some recovery of investment in capital intensive processes but uh, some of that is uh, directed at trying to avoid the dangers of crime and criminal action that might impair uh, the activity. Mining has suffered pretty badly over the last few years things like poor commodity prices, which is a global issue, but you know, in South Africa we've got power uncertainty, uh, lack of regulatory transparency, there's issues with the, with the cadaster, all of these kinds of things. Now, could you give your thoughts on whether the 2024 budget sufficiently addressed any of these issues and concerns or not? My concern about the 2024 budget is that it did not really get to grips with some of the major structural impediments 
in the country. Uh, the budget was more focused on trying to control the budget deficit and the public debt and using the Golden Foreign Exchange contingency reserve account to help it do that, rather than to concentrate on any of the structural weaknesses of the economy. Uh, apologists will say, well, that's not the function of the National Treasury, it's a function of the entire Cabinet to try and alleviate that. But the fact is that there was insufficient in the budget to convince us that action is being taken to reverse the uh, debilitatingly low growth of the economy. How did the budget address what needs to happen to reinvigorate the construction sector? Again, um, there was very little in the budget uh, directly that one can attribute to uh, try and reinvigorating the construction sector, other than to point to the fact that if one looks at the numbers, more money is being allocated to capital projects than before and hopefully some of that will filter through to the construction sector. And if one looks at the growth forecasts by the National Treasury for uh, investment in capital equipment, it is earmarked to grow by 35 to 4.5% per year for the next three years, which is a faster rate of growth than for the overall economy and for consumer spending. Uh, the big question is, will that actually be implemented and see the light of day? There have been some encouraging signs in the last two years that investment in capital formation has improved slightly, uh, but it's insufficient to really promote uh, expectations of a vastly improved economic growth. And on the mining side, one can point also to a huge drag on the part of government uh, in helping the mining sector where it was reported that there were two and a half thousand applications for mining licenses in 2023 and not a single one of them has been processed. What impact in your view has CADA deployment had on the overall economy and the performance of it and is, is there any hope of this being dealt with? I mean there has been some great exposés in recent weeks. What are your thoughts on that? I believe CADA deployment and uh, BEE, the way it's been implemented, have been critical in the decline of the South African economy. In the first 15 years of democracy, you had appointments being made by the government of people who were in the favour of trying to transform uh, the management of the country. Uh, some of those were very astute appointments, but since uh, the, but the Polokwane conference in 2007 marked a complete change where people started being appointed purely on the basis of their uh, loyalty and friendliness towards uh, what was then effectively a new regime and their appointments were aimed directly at trying to rape many of the institutions of the country for the uh, benefit of a handful of individuals and that has led to a massive decline. Whether that will be reversed it's going to be a tall order to do so but uh, the general election in May could constitute a starting point for reversing that process.